Hey, what's going on, folks? Hope everyone's having a good morning. Let's talk about leash reactivity, right? One of the more popular subjects amongst most dog trainers, the thing we get contacted on most, if not the most, right? Um, dog pulling on the leash and leash reactivity, probably the two most common things, I would think, at least for me, that we get contacted for. So let's talk a little bit about how I deal with it, okay? So let me stress that again, how I deal with it. This doesn't mean it's the only way. In fact, there's very rarely only one way to deal with dog training problems, okay? I, I wish more people would understand that. Um, I truly believe that the more ways you can teach something, whether it's to teach a behavior or to stop a behavior, I think the more ways we throw at the dog and make the communication very clear, I think the easier it is on the dog and the more successful it is. Um, I truly believe that. So I never really just stick with one thing to try to take care of a problem, right? I think where most dog owners and, and a lot of dog trainers are failing when it comes to the reactivity is we're trying to address the problem head on without treating the real problem. Like most things in dog training, you know, and I've talked about this several times before. Um, I, I've had, I have a bunch of videos out on it talking about it and, and, you know, going into more detail. But every several months when those videos kind of get lost in the mix, you know, I still get the questions all the time. So let's talk about first what I think we shouldn't do or what makes the situation worse. It's kind of sad that we still have to even say this, but I, I think it's unfortunate that in 2020, with all the information out there, all the good information and all the knowledge out there, that many will still take a dog, dog trainer, dog owner, put a prong collar or an e-collar on the dog, go out, face the main problem, the reactivity or leash aggression, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. I don't care about the terms you use. And they try to punish that behavior out of the dog. It's just not going to work long term, guys. It, it may work in the, in the short, uh, you know, on the short side of things. It may give you a little bit of relief up front. But the problem is you're not changing the mindset of the dog. The issue's still going to be there, okay? And when you put a prong collar on a dog, especially when there's no training prior, or you put an e-collar on the dog, especially when there's no training prior, you really run a risk of either creating a lot more issues, a lot more frustration, or just completely flattening and suppressing the dog. And uh, we have to stop with that. There's just no reason, no reason to be flattening dogs for something that is pretty normal for a lot of dogs that haven't been taught differently, okay? So again, like a broken record, sorry, there's nothing new. For me, the most important thing is how you live with your dog dictates how the dog lives with you. And so if you're real lackadaisical, on the inside of the home with your rules and boundaries and the relationship with the dog and the dog gets away with a lot of things that it shouldn't and the dog doesn't really see you as that person it can count on to be in charge of its life the dog may love you but if it doesn't respect you and believe in you you have no chance on stopping those more serious unwanted behaviors outside of the home because you're putting the dog in a situation where it feels it has to be the one taking care of the issues. So I hope that makes sense, okay? So the way I like to handle things is if I get a, a dog at my home to do a board and train with, now I don't do board and trains with human aggressive dogs. We've talked about that. I believe that the owner plays so much of a vital and role, a vital role in that, that I only want to do private lessons. I, I, you know, that's that's just my belief system. Um, if I get a dog aggressive dog or a dog reactive dog, like I said, I don't care about the term. At my home, once I put that dog where it's going to be staying, and I let my dogs out to go into the same area, which is in 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 my garage. Um, 
you know, of course that dog's gonna, it may blow up and act crazy and whatever. My dogs are used to that and they just don't change their behavior, you know? Certain dogs, they'll go over and check out. Most dogs, they won't. Um, Mango and Buddy are a little thick-headed, so even if a dog's being, you know, little explosive, they may get close and go check the dog out. Luca, he's like, oh, here we go again. You know, he's really, really good at that, and he just doesn't pay any attention to that. But here's the thing, guys. I don't do anything with that dog. I don't start talking to it or giving it commands or giving it food or giving it corrections. I do nothing. You know, my dogs are going to stay out there with that dog and they're going to spend a lot of time with it. And you know what? After a while, not very long, usually after a couple of minutes, that dog starts settling down and stops the barking, growling, exploding, whatever it's doing, because it realizes it's not getting it anywhere. Nothing's changing. Okay. It's not getting rewarded for that because in the real world, what usually happens out on the street, when your dog has those kind of issues and it sees another dog and it starts blowing up, one of two things usually happen. Either you're turning around and removing the dog from that situation, which in my opinion is no different than giving the dog a big handful of treats. You're rewarding that dog's behavior for acting like that and they get used to that. And that's why they continue to do it. Or on the other end, the dog that's coming your way, the owner sees what your dog's doing and stops and crosses the streets or turns around and goes the other way. Again, that behavior from your dog is always getting rewarded. Okay, so that's never going to fix the problem. We're avoiding it. At the same time, if you take your dog out there without putting in the work beforehand, you know, at least a week or two, I mean, at least a week or two, and that's not a long time, guys. If that trust and that relationship is not there and you go out there with, like I said, a prom collar or an e-collar or anything and you try to nail that dog for exploding like that, it's not going to work. Okay, I've never seen it work for anyone. You know, that dog may stop that behavior for that instance because it's avoiding the discomfort or the pain from what you're doing with the specific tools that you're using. And that's that's not dog training and that's not a true permanent result. And we want the long lasting real result to where when the dog does see those dogs, it no longer feels it has to do that. That's, that's the key guys. And so that's where people struggle with. They're addressing the problem head on like that. There's exceptions to every rule. There's going to be times where you just have to do something quick to be able to make a little leeway to be able to handle it. I get it, but it's so rare, okay? So for me, what I will do is I don't do anything different when it comes to the training. I do all the normal training that I do with every dog. That doesn't change. Like I'm not changing this dog's training because it's leash reactive or, or dog aggressive. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to lay the foundation the same on most dogs unless I have to change it. If changing it will benefit that specific dog, then we change it, you know, and sometimes that does happen. But for the most part, there is no foundation there. So we have to build that foundation. Okay. I'm not going to put that dog in that predicament. So if it's really bad on the leash <coughs> and aggressive reactive, we're not going for a walk. We're not going to encounter dogs. So my job is when I have that kind of problem for the first week or two, until I have a very solid foundation and relationship with that dog, my goal is to keep that dog out of that mindset, out of that situation to where it feels it needs to do that. If I put it in that situation too early, then I fail. That's my problem. And I don't want to do that. Okay. So I go about all the regular training, the marker training, the basic obedience, using food to teach the new behaviors, the e-collar conditioning, the same. The e-collar conditioning is always the same for one simple reason. It works. It works very, very well. And it builds a strong dog not flattens a weak dog. That's the big difference, guys. And unfortunately, I think with the e-collar, we're still overusing it in the wrong places and underusing it in the right places. And um, I really hope that that continues to change. And it has, you know, there's a lot more people doing great things 
with the tools that are available to us. So I go about all the normal training, okay? So before I take that dog out on a walk, whether I go to a park or in my neighborhood where I'm going to encounter dogs, I need that dog not only to have a strong foundation, but I need that dog to truly believe that I can completely control it in any situation. That's what I need to believe. That's what I need the dog to believe. That dog has to be able to understand that I can control it in any situation, okay? We're a team, we're a team. There's a lot of teamwork when it comes to working with the dog one-on-one, -on -one, but make no mistakes about it. That dog has to understand that I'm the captain. That's simple. We're, we're a team, but I am the captain. And then what happens almost always, guys, is when we do go out on that walk and we encounter dogs, either the issue is completely gone, it's not even there anymore, or it's a lot more mild than it was before, okay? Because now the dog has a little bit more of an idea of how to function in a normal world as to where before it just did it. It was doing what it was taught to do. The owners just don't realize that they taught it to do that, okay? Now at that point, if the dog shows any kind of stress at all, any change in behavior, on, that's unhealthy. I don't care if the dog looks and is curious, but if it shows any change in behavior that is unwanted or not beneficial to the dog, then I'm going to correct that mindset right away. I'm going to correct it right away. And what happens, guys, is when you have that foundation in that relationship, almost always that correction isn't going to have to be very strong because the dog gets it. And I truly believe that corrections have a lot more meaning when you have a relationship with that animal. I really do. I truly, truly believe that. And so very rarely will you have to go out and hammer that dog with any kind of a correction, whether that's a leash pop with a slip lead, a flat collar, a prong collar, an e-collar. I could almost guarantee you that in most cases, that correction is not going to be very strong. And it's going to be very effective because now the dog understands that communication. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think of good examples. Uh, I made a video a while back with a client of mine with two Cane Corsos, right? Um, had troubles out on the walks with dogs and stuff, whatever. And I gave specific examples. As a matter of fact, as soon as I les left one of the private lessons that day, I gave you know, if I remember correctly, an exact example of what we did when we went out and finally went out on the walk and we saw some dogs and the dogs reacted, you know, I talked about giving the corrections with the e-collar because I know there's people who still believe I don't correct with an e-collar. That's not true at all. I just make sure the dog understands what's going on before I do that, you know, and I pulled over right away and I talked about it because it was so unbelievably effective and not temporary or false. The dog completely changed. It wasn't an issue anymore because there was an understanding there. We educated the dog and we educated the owners, you know? And so what we do with those dogs, guys, it means nothing if the owners don't understand how to not only completely maintain it, but to continue to progress in the right direction, okay? That's just the way I see things, but I'm, I'm telling you, as I'm sure most dog trainers will say, leash reactivity or aggression is, you know, the one of the most popular things we get called for, if not the most popular. And I never have an issue with it. I just never have an issue with taking care of it very easily. It usually just slips away on its own. Now, when you have the tougher cases, you know, where the dog's really strong, you know, get a lot of German Shepherds that we see like that. You know, then once the dog's ready, we'll go out to a dog park and get a good distance away and work on all the things that we've been doing, you know, closely getting closer and closer to the dog park. And then we really put the dog to the test. We do put some pressure on the dog, not pressure as far as like corrections and stuff. I mean, pressure as far as demanding that the dog responds the same way in the real world, you know, and we practice the things we've done up until that point 
in that intermittent phase that I talk about all the time because it's so unbelievably effective, guys. And that's where a lot of people are are, are failing. Um, let's see. The, I think the last time I went to the dog park, um, Angela and Link. Hi, Angela, if you're watching. You know, Link was a really strong dog, German Shepherd. You know, a lot of reactivity there. And, and the thing that blew me away with Link, Angela did a great job. She's very, very mild-mannered and soft-spoken. So that was difficult to overcome because Link's a really strong dog. And when he goes, he goes. And the one thing that blew me away about that whole situation, once we got to that park and we trained and it was becoming normal and we, we put Link in a lot of real tough distractions and he was doing great. But the thing that blew me away the most, when we were getting ready to leave, we put Link in a down and we were just hanging out and there was a couple coming with a few dogs, if I remember correctly, off leash. And this is in the park, not the dog park. So I'm thinking, okay, okay. Let's keep an eye on these dogs and see what happens, you know? And what happened there was, I think it was a Boston Terrier, if I'm not mistaken. Boston Terrier or a Frenchie, I don't remember which one. You know, as they're coming up and that dog saw Link, that dog came full speed at us, acting really out of control. These owners had no control of the dogs and they should not have been off leash. And that dog went after Link and blew up. And Link's response blew me away. He didn't sit there and just take it, you know, because he was flattened. We'd never done that. He spoke up for himself and he barked up and kind of blew with the dog and laid right back down, which was more impressive to me. You know, that was really, really impressive. He was able to still act like a normal dog and respond in those situations like a normal dog, but was also able to turn himself off. And, and that was great. And that comes from everything we did before, the weeks prior, not what we did in the park that day, guys. And that's what people are failing to see. You know, when you truly fix something like that, it comes from all the work you put in beforehand. And that's just at the end where you can put everything to the test and everything comes together. Okay. So again, that's just my take on it. That's what I do. Um, just there's very rarely any issues with taking care of that stuff, guys. It's usually very, very easy to deal with, you know, but that dog has to, you have to be fair and give it a real solid foundation. The communication has to be clear. The relationship has to be strong and that dog has to believe that you can control it in any situation and it's not that difficult. And if you put those things together and you utilize the tools properly, with the relationship and the clear communication and the belief system that you are the captain of that ship, you know, the captain of that team, you're going to have wonderful results with a lot less conflict. All right. So I hope that hopes and I hope everyone has a great day. And thanks again for the continued support. Stay out of all the, all the crap out there. You know what I mean? Stay talking to the positive people. There's plenty of them out there. A lot of great trainers out there, folks, and uh, take what you can from all the good ones and just make it your own, you know, and, and, and enjoy what we have at our fingertips today in the world of dog training. Peace.